Welcome to my lecture online. Now in this example, we have our work cut out for us because there's a lot of questions. A through I. So you give us a circle, they draw some lines, all that is given. They only give us the measure of one of the angles and they're telling us to find the measure of all these other angles there. So let's take a look and see what this problem is asking for, what the text says. It says we have a circle P, that's indicated right here. ST is the diameter, all right, so from S to T that represents the diameter because it goes through the central, the center of the circle, it must be a diameter. And the line from L to A to B, and it goes on infinitely on both directions, that is tangent at point A. A line that is tangent by necessity must, if you draw a line from the center of the circle to that point, of course, that must be a 90 degree angle on both sides of that. The point T is the midpoint of the arc between A and K. So T represents the exact midpoint between these two. All right, that is key. That is key to understanding what's going on here. And then they tell us that the measure from A, A K, S, from A to K to S. So this angle right here is given to us at 74 degrees. Find each of the following. All right, so let's try our first one. A, T, S. So from A to T to S. Well, let's see here. If we knew the measure of this arc, we'd be able to find it. But since we already know this right here, and we know that the measure of this angle must be half the measure of the arc, we know that this must be two times 74 degrees. Ah, trying to get the cap off here. All right, so we have two times 74 degrees, which is equal to 100 and 48 degrees. All right, so this is 148 degrees. So we have that from realizing that this angle is 74, so the measure of the arc is on the edge of the circle, not at the center of the circle. If it was at the center of the circle, of course, the measure here would be equal to the measure of the angle, but since the point is on the edge of the circle, the measure here is twice the measure of the angle. So now, if we draw a line like this, And then if we draw a line like this. All right, that will help out. Because now what we can do is realizing there must be perfect symmetry here because T is right halfway between A and K. So it, cross, it cuts across here to the center point. That means that this line must be equal to this line. This angle must be equal to this angle. So we have that perfect symmetry going. And by utilizing that, we can go ahead and then assume that this here must also be 74 degrees, which means that this angle right here, the, the two angles together, right? So there's two angles here. If I add those together, those together must be 180 minus twice 174. So this angle here would be 180 degrees minus two times 74 degrees, which is 180 degrees minus 148 degrees, which is equal to 32 degrees. So this is 32 degrees, and because of perfect symmetry, this must be 16 degrees, and this must be 16 degrees there as well. All right, now we're in business. So first of all, now we need to find ATS. So from A to TTS, that would be the same angle here, uh, ATS, so let me draw this line right here. So this angle from A to T to S, that angle here must be the same as this angle here because they have the same arc length at the end of the two points right here, which means that this must also be 74 degrees because they have the same arc length on the far end here where the two points meet the circle. So from A to T to S must also be 74 degrees. All right. Now we go from A to S to T. That's this angle right here, and we're already determined by the symmetry of this whole setup that this must be 16 degrees. How about LAS? So from L to A to S. Hmm. Well, for the same reason, notice that we subtend this same arc length from L to A to S. We have the same subtend of the arc length right here, which is 148 degrees, so that means that this angle in here must be half of the 148 degrees, or also 74 degrees. All right, how about TAB? From T to A to B. Hmm. 
Well, for that, what we need to do is find out what this arc length is right here, and notice that if this angle is 74 degrees, and that goes from A to K, and from A to S, that means that this here must also be 148 degrees. So let's put it on the inside, 148 degrees. So 148 plus 148 together is 296. So this distance here, or this arc length right here, must be 360 minus 296. So 360 degrees minus 296 degrees is equal to 64 degrees. So this arc length from A to T to, F to K is 64 degrees. Since T is halfway in between A to K, that means that this is 32 degrees, and this must be 32 degrees as well. Now knowing all that, we can probably figure out the rest. So now going from T, A, B, this angle right here subtends um, 32 degrees. Of course, since we're at the edge here, then, so the angle in here must be half the arc length, so half 32, which is 16 degrees. To measure from A to P to T, this angle right here, notice that here we have an arc length of 32 degrees, but we start at the center of the circle. That means that the angle of here must equal the angle of the arc, 32 degrees, so here, this angle here must also be 32 degrees. All right, SAT, ooh, that sounds like a test, the SAT, SAT. So from S to A to T, this angle here, notice it subtends from there all the way to here, right? So we have S, to A to T. So we're looking at this angle right here. Let me use a different color because otherwise it gets a little confusing here. Get the cap on my black pen. All right, so we're looking for S, A, T. We're looking for this angle right here. So it's in red. I'll put a double line there. So that, that angle right there. And notice it's on the edge of the circle and it subtends the arc from T all the way to S right here. So we add these two together, 32 plus 148 is 180 degrees. And we know that this angle here must be half the angle of the arc. So half 180 degrees is 90 degrees. How about TSK? T to S to K. Notice that here the arc is 32 degrees. This is a point on the far end of the circle. That means that this angle here must be half the angle of the arc, 32 degrees. It's already marked at 16 degrees, so TSK must be 16 degrees. All right, we're almost there. How about KAT? From K to A to T. That's this angle right here. So let me mark that one like this. So KAT, that's this angle right here. Notice that angle must be half the angle of the arc, which is 32 degrees, so that must also be 16 degrees. And finally, TAP. From T to A to P, that's this angle right here. Notice that the, hmm, hmm, how do we do that? Well, I need a different color again. Let's see if my orange color works. So from T to A to P, that's this angle right here. I'll do a quadruple line right there. Notice this triangle right here. We have a 74 degree angle, a 32 degree, degree angle, and then I need to find this angle right here. So of course we know that this would be, and I'll use black because orange is hard to see, but look for an angle that's equal to 180 degrees minus this angle here, which is 32 degrees, minus this angle right here, which is 74 degrees, Together, that is 106 degrees, subtract from 180, that's equal to 74 degrees. So we know that the angle from TAP must also be 74 degrees. All right, that's how it's done. Now, obviously, there's different paths we could have taken, different combinations, different order of events. But you can see that we have used many of the rules that we've learned in this chapter. And that is, therefore, a really good exercise to try and find the angles. So hopefully, we got them all right. And that is how we did it.